wholesale food club like BJ's or Costco, and uh, I buy in bulk. And I found that I'm able to, uh, I was able to build my survival pantry. You know, a year or two ago, I, I used to run out of food like two weeks early before my budget would allow me to go shopping again. But now I have, I went from like a three month extra supply. Now, now I have six months, and my, my next goal is to have enough food for a year for me and my family. And uh, I suggest that people buy a lot of beans and rice, stuff that doesn't have to be refrigerated in case there is a, a grid down scenario. And a, a lot of those rice and bean recipes can, can be really tasty if you add the right spice, herbs and spices to it. So, yeah, uh, but not just that. People also have to learn how to, to hunt and trap like all the books, like all your books talk about. Right. This is um, survival. There, there's no one key thing that you can do. Uh, I'm sure you watch Doomsday Prepper, and they have their experts evaluate everybody at the end, and they look at all the food, and they calculate how long it will last, and they say, you got six months survival time. And Why the show, I think, is kind of a joke, and they're kind of making fun of preppers as a whole you can still learn good things about different tips. And one thing that's real simple for everybody to do, you can get hard winter wheat, and you can grow it as sprouts. Sprouts super easy to do. You can also learn how to grind it to make your own flour. It's all, I mean, go to YouTube. There's tons of information on how to store the food properly, and how to vacuum pack it or make sure there's no bugs in it. There's all kinds of things to learn. And that flower, the only thing is don't just get all hard red winter wheat. you got to have some of the white wheat in there too because if you want to make bread that rises because whole wheat won't rise like regular bread does. You need to mix in some white in it to get it to rise. And see, that's what I'm talking about. There's all kinds of learning curves you have to learn and whatever you do on this. I've actually hand grinded it, the white and the wheat and mixed them together and baked bread. You can also grind that up and make like your own cream of wheat. And it's fairly cheap to do. I haven't bought any in years, but it seems to me wheat's still fairly cheap that you can get it for no more than 20 bucks and learn how to store it yourself 20 bucks for 44 pounds of bushel that's a lot of food put away and like you said rice and beans put them up throw in some oatmeal and honey honey is one of the original survival foods and it never goes bad it can get super hard and crystallized on you and all you have to do is heat it back up again and it will store I don't know how long, 50 years at least. So look at everything. And you brought up spices, mm. but all of us that aren't living next to the ocean, salt. If you plan on canning food, you got to have canning salt. you got to have regular salt. I tell everybody, make sure you put at least 50 pounds of salt away because <laughs> we got to have salt in our diet. Yeah. Luckily, I live right next to a salt mine, so I'll, I'll be uh, okay. That was part of my strategic location, um, living near a salt mine. But um, definitely, um, oh, as far as doomsday preppers, uh, I was invited to be on the next season, and I, I told them no. I, I didn't like the questions they were asking. They were, they were way too personal. They were asking me uh, on the questionnaire for the show, uh, which guns do I have, how many guns, what kind of ammo, how much ammo do I have, how much food do I have stored up, where's my secret bunker. And uh, I said, whoa, whoa, hold on, man. What are you guys, like the uh, NSA or something? You know, it could have been good promotion from my, my magazine and, and the network, but uh, I had to say no. Yep, they contacted me too, and I said flat out no. I said, the only way I'll do it, and that's if you want to go out in the wilderness, and I'll show you how to do a wilderness survival and trap and 
cook everything right out there, but you're not coming to my house and you're not seeing my stores. End of story. Yeah. Well, that's good. That's good for you, true. man. No, no, no serious prepper worried about his uh, family safety, and uh, we, we take that show seriously. Yeah, it's uh, people getting their 15 minutes of fame, and well, look at how many people, how many arrested. You know, that one guy in Tennessee oh, had yeah? all his guns taken. Uh, that other guy, that yeah, was in your magazine. That, the convicted felon that got arrested afterwards. Yeah, the doomsday dumbass, I, I call him. There was quite a few people arrested after being on that show. So, let me ask you. You say there's a big learning curve, which there is. What do you suggest that people who want to get into prepping uh, have a lot of money? They probably don't have a lot of time left to start prepping with the way the world's looking, but um, what do you suggest they do to start out? Like, what information do they read? There's so much out there. Um, what do you suggest? On my website, I... You can find an article. I don't remember the exact title, but it was uh, prepping on the cheap. Or it was basic how to just buy a couple extra cans here and there, what to buy. Maybe it was called five-gallon buckets. I was getting five-gallon buckets free from my bakery. Food-grade buckets is very important. And then you just put like tuna fish away. You buy a couple of cans of tuna fish, can of oatmeal, can of salt. You know, you start buying all these dry goods and you store it in the bucket and you put it in your basement. It, I had this whole thing worked out. It was like $20 a week. And you put that for your prepper storage. You know, some places you get these five-gallon buckets, food grade from, like, McDonald's, and they sell them to you for two bucks a piece, which is dirt cheap with the lid. So you, even if you got to buy the bucket, you start buying even just a little stuff like that, and you start storing it away. And rice is for cheap, and it's one of the best products you can put up. Uh, oatmeal is really good. Just start doing something, even on a budget, and go to YouTube. Learn how to seal up so you can buy hard red winter wheat and rice so you can start putting them in five-gallon buckets and get mylar bags and seal them in. And once you've got, like, rice and beans, that stuff stored in your basement, you want it in your basement to keep it cool. And most basements average about 55 degrees, which is perfect food storage temperature. So you fill up your buckets, you seal them properly, and you store them down there, and they're good 25 to 50 years, you know, for certain products, like your rice and your beans, your dry goods. And make sure you, before you go out and buy 10,000 pounds of food, Make sure you get it and you try it and you learn how. You don't want to store a bunch of food you don't know how to cook and you don't know how to prepare or you can't stand the taste to. So buy whatever you're going to store and try it. You know, if you like um, navy beans and you know how to cook them, great. That's what you want to store. Don't get something you don't like kidney beans if you don't know how to cook them. Get into it, but beans, rice, rice and beans is probably one of the most easiest meals to prepare, and it's very nutritional for you. So just start out small, and before you know it, in a couple months, you your supplies keep building up, and you should, within a year, be able to easily store a year's worth of food up. It might not be the top of the line, but as a I'd rather have something I can't stand to eat than look at empty shelves. Yeah. Definitely. I definitely agree that food is is one of the most important aspects of uh, this whole thing. Um, 
between if the economy collapses, the rising food prices, or even a, a grid down scenario, food is going to be one of the the hardest things to get. And uh, with the uh, droughts in California that are coming up, they're saying that's also going to have a major effect on uh, food prices and distribution. Um, the, the future does not look good. I try to stay uh, optimistic, and uh, I'm a very positive person. But uh, with, with all the stuff going on, like you said, if you, if you haven't become a, a prepper yet, you're you're, you're going to be in some serious trouble. And uh, if you haven't gotten into prepping yet, I really suggest that you do. Uh, a lot of people, they need to be scared in, into doing something, it seems. And... Uh, if you want to read some really good books, maybe even get scared a little, read Bruce's books, Grid Down. They, it, honestly, bro, the, the, this is one of the, some of the best books I've ever read. I, I was telling um, one of the guests I interviewed yesterday, he, he writes uh, Flotilla and Iron Mountain. Uh, his name is Dan, Daniel Haight. And I, I was telling him how... Uh, when I was younger, I had a, a attention, like a slight case of attention deficit disorder, where I only wanted to watch TV. I never wanted to read any books because they they just didn't hold my attention. And uh, I really like post-apocalyptic type fiction, and it, it's got to be really good for me to uh, to read it. And your book does that to me. It's got me glued to the pages. If, if I wasn't so busy with, with my network and, and my magazine, I would have read them all already. But I, I really have got to say, you've done a very well job with these books, a very good job. And, uh, you know, a lot of people think that, like, if you're a hunter or you're an outdoors guy, that um, you're not really the smartest person. But you can tell by your books that not only are you an outdoors guy, you're a very educated man as well. And uh, you can see that in, in your books. Um, you also co-wrote this with Sarah Freeman. Yes. She yes, helped you write? The well, she's a, a prepper, and that's just her pseudonym name. She wants to keep her name out of the public's eye. She's, uh, let's just say, a very private person, and she wants to remain that way. But she had a lot of the prepper knowledge, and, like, she wrote some of the, like, uh, I can't remember his name, too many characters in my book. The one guy got hurt, and the Asian girl helped nurse him back. And I bring up medicinal medicines a little in the book to get people to start thinking about this because also the doctors, the hospitals, all that's going to be gone. So we're going to have to learn the old ways again, you know, common stuff that you can use to help you fight infections or even a common cold. And I bring up my latest book, uh, How You Can Make Tea out of drying wild leaves off of, like, berry bushes. You can get vitamins from that. And that's very important because not only are you going to have all these diseases running around, running rampant, but your immune system, because you're not eating properly, is going to be down. So you'll be more susceptible to catching these different diseases. So you want to make sure that you have your own way of combating this. And keeping your vitamins up is another very important thing. And there's so much to overall survival. But hopefully with writing this, I wanted to show and people that wanted to prep how to get ready, different things to think about, what to store, how to get ready, and you know what? A lot of folks like you did, Vince, who moved out and you moved into the country, which was a brilliant move, and you start living that off-the-grid lifestyle. Because if you think you're going to come from 
your big city or your suburb and you're just going to magically go out and you're going to know how to grow a garden even. You're going to starve. 